Now at 10, visitors by the thousands look for ways to stay cool at this year's Marion Days event. Plus, a local HVAC company has some tips on keeping your air conditioner in working order. And a school sports camp in southwest Missouri looks for ways to keep students healthy during the high temps. The four states most watched news starts now. Marion Days in Carthage is set to begin tomorrow, and thousands have already made their way to the Maple Leaf City with some setting up tents and camping out. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. High temps this week could make staying cool and safe difficult at that gathering. Many attendees have found shaded areas to stay out of the sun, and many people are either wearing hats or using umbrellas to fend off the harmful rays. For those who've traveled from all around the country for this Vietnamese Catholic festival, the experience is worth having to fend off the heat. Like a whole ton of like Catholic Vietnamese people just coming into one area, you know? Like, I don't know, I, I'm not like, I don't usually go every year, I know, but it, it's just really nice to have that community, like I said earlier, you know? It's very empowering, uh, being able to be with people who are just like you, uh, being able to embrace your own identities. Marion Days officially begins tomorrow and will run through Sunday. High temperatures can overwork air conditioning units, cause them to fail. This can leave households in an uncomfortable situation, to say the least. An HVAC professional in Pittsburgh recommends keeping the filters clean and changing them when needed. Anyone in this trade, summertime is a busy season of the year because there ain't so, only so much you can do before it's, hey, we need AC, we need cooling because it's getting too hot, especially with the heat rising. HVAC professionals also remind the public to keep up with AC maintenance because if damage becomes severe, repair costs can go up. The air conditioner is going to get a workout and short term some rain coming. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. Yeah, another hot one for us today. When the humidity is this high, it's hard to get above 100 degrees, but you can definitely make a run at it. And that's what we did today, 97 for a high. In fact, look at our overnight low it was 80 degrees. We had heat indices 105 to 112 as we went through the afternoon hours. Right now, it's still warm, 86 Joplin, 83 in Pittsburgh. Look at this, mid to upper 80s, still 91 in Independence. Excessive heat warning in effect again tomorrow and heat advisories. We look pretty good, but check this out. Just to our northwest, look at this huge complex of showers and thunderstorms pushing east, southeast. So let me take you through time. By the time we get to 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, a batch rolling into southeastern Kansas. Diving southeast should affect Pittsburgh and should even clip the Joplin metro and then push east late tonight into the morning hour. So we're going to be talking more about rain chances here in just a bit. That rain could be a problem for Marion days. Thanks, Doug. The school year is right around the corner, which means sports camps are underway across the country and during a week of yeah, miserable temperatures and high humidity. All of these factors come into play to determine how long these young athletes can safely stay outside. Nicolette Zangara has more from a sports camp in Springfield. It's very hot. Don't want to get like lightheaded and stuff like that. So. As one could imagine, playing a physically demanding sport in this kind of heat can be dangerous. Matthew Butler, an incoming freshman, has been playing football since he was five. While he's used to fighting through these elements, it still has an impact on his performance. Uh, no, it slows you down a little bit, but you just got to toughen up, you know, just got to go out there and play your hardest. Cox Health was on standby measuring the wet bulb globe temperature to ensure the players were safe in the heat. But what does that temperature mean? It takes into account sun angle, wind speed, humidity, and the surface temperature to determine working conditions for those outside. Helps us in, in giving coaches uh, what they need to do as far as equipment wear or how frequent uh, they have water breaks and how long those should be. The watering hole was certainly the hot spot, so to speak, at today's football camp, and there was no shortage of umbrellas to provide shade to those watching from the sidelines. By the end of the camp, the wet bulb globe temperature was nearing 92, which Taylor says that's when it's time to move inside. Luckily, there wasn't any cases of heat exhaustion or heat stroke, which would have resulted in the athlete getting dunked into a cold tank of water. We were able to dodge the bullet on that and just uh, dealt with some other injuries on the day. The players at the camp said it was well stocked with water and the only condition to play in that's worse than this is snow. 
Kansas Governor Laura Kelly visited Independence today to help break ground on an expansion and renovation project at the Labette Health Independence Healthcare Center. That $7.9 million expansion will include a new cancer infusion center, rural health clinic, and patient testing labs. It will also provide upgrades to the emergency department ultrasound services and add 17 patient exam rooms. Construction is expected to be completed by June 1st of next year. MoDOT invited the public to a meeting concerning needs in the region. That meeting took place today at the Public Safety Training Facility in Joplin. MoDOT asked the public to weigh in on the list of needs from around the state and provide feedback to help establish future funding priorities. MoDOT officials say this is an annual process. It's sort of a check-in with the public about how are we doing in terms of do we have the priorities right, does the list look correct, because our process is very grassroots. We start with working with regional officials who are in turn working with local officials who have their ear on their community. Um, but even through this process, sometimes needs emerge because something's happening in the area. Comments can be submitted through August 23rd using the comment form we've provided on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Fair season continues in Southeast Kansas. KOAM photojournalist Ty Parks is going to give us an exhibitor's eye look at the festivities that's coming up. But up first, a new lawsuit levels accusations of deceptive practices against the world's largest ticket marketplace. Kenneth Lee Simpson was all a new lawsuit accuses StubHub, the world's largest ticket marketplace, of, quote, preying on consumers using a deceptive practice called drip pricing. That's when customers don't find out about expensive fees until the last step before buying a ticket. Consumer correspondent Usher Qureshi has that story. What's the point of all the hidden fees? Fans who live for live music say it's infuriating. Finding tickets on some apps and websites listed at one price only to discover the total due at checkout is much higher. I get to the payment page and after service fees and taxes, my ticket went from $164 to $270. Washington, D.C.'s Attorney General is suing StubHub. The complaint accuses the company of bait and switch practices, adding fulfillment and service fees of up to 40% of the ticket price at the end of the transaction without disclosing how they're calculated or what they're for. So you think consumers are being misled? Are they being taken advantage of? StubHub intentionally misleads consumers by deceptively offering a low price at the front end, luring them into a long, protracted buying process. That buying process is called drip pricing, and here's how it works. Companies advertise an initially low price for their products, but as consumers navigate a multi-step online purchasing process while time is ticking down, additional fees drip in, adding to the cost, until at checkout you suddenly discover you're paying a much higher price. When fees are dripped, consumers become more likely to buy. They also tend to buy more expensive options. Business and marketing professor Vicki Morwitz explains the psychology of drip pricing which includes the fear of losing the ticket or the hassle of looking for a cheaper option. Consumers tend to overestimate um, how much time and effort it would take to resume search and underestimate the benefit from doing so. California is one of a few states with laws now requiring upfront pricing. When we tried buying a ticket on StubHub in California, the total price is shown from the beginning, including taxes and fees. Schwab encourages other AGs to take action on drip pricing. Over the course since 2015, StubHub's collected close to $120 million in hidden illegal fees. It violates the law, and that's why it's essential that we stop that behavior. StubHub released a statement in response to this story, which said in part, quote, We are disappointed that the D.C. Attorney General is targeting StubHub when our user experience is consistent with the law, our competitors' practices, and the broader e-commerce sector, end quote. It's important to point out that the Attorney General's office isn't saying the fees themselves are illegal. It's the lack of transparency for the consumer during the buying process. A little bit later, some local kids host a cool way to beat the heat and raise some funds for a cool cause. Plus a few uh, scattered thunderstorms trying to roll in later on tonight. Those details and, of course, the heat coming up next. Freedom, you need trust it.
Well, of course, it turned out to be hot outside for us today. Temperatures are way up there again into the upper 90s. Uh, when your humidity is this high, it's very hard to hit 100 degrees, but some areas in our western counties did make a run at that. Uh, heat indices 105 to 112 for us today. Nice shot. Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. Indigo is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. Look at these temperatures. Still way up there from low to mid 80s to upper 80s once you get into our western counties. Here's 7th. Here's range line currently sitting at 86. South winds at about 5 to 10 to 15. So staying a little bit on the breezy side tonight. And look at our heat indices. It still feels like from about 90 to our upper 90s in our western county. So a sticky, muggy, warm, nasty night across the region. Winds still out of the south. These are going to switch around out of the north as we get into tomorrow afternoon. What that will do for us, it will back our temperatures down just a hair by Friday, but it's also going to lower the humidity just a bit. Heat, excessive heat warnings in effect. Kansas, Oklahoma, everybody else in this weird looking orange is in heat advisories once again as we go into the daytime hours tomorrow. Orange boxes popping up to our north. These are all severe thunderstorm watches. Look at this cluster of showers and thunderstorms plowing across northeastern Kansas. A lot of thunder, a lot of lightning, severe thunderstorm warnings all the way through uh, the Kansas City metro area, right down I-35 and Emporia down toward Wichita. This will stay to our north, but this cluster from Emporia back to Hutch, that will give at least our northern counties some showers and thunderstorms later on tonight. Big dome of high pressure to our south across Texas gives us the heat rotating around the high. We get these waves and we get occasional chances for some showers and thunderstorms. All right, look at these guys driving in. Here's about one o'clock in the morning. Yates Center, Fredonia, Neotishay, Chanute, Parsons, Fort Scott. Some stronger storms. Can't even rule out a random severe thunderstorm warning or two, but a lot of thunder, a lot of lightning. These dive southeast should get into Pittsburgh, should get into the Joplin Metro, mainly along north of I-44, may get even a little bit farther south in southwestern Missouri. We could use a little bit of rain. These quickly push out by morning, a few hit and miss storms during the morning, then a slight chance as we get into the afternoon, but mainly hot, humid, temps into the upper 90s. Notice how the winds are out of the north and then out of the south, so we have a weak front kind of draped across the region. With that front, some additional pop-up thunderstorms tomorrow night, but mainly affecting our southern counties. So northern counties tonight, southern counties as we go into tomorrow. And then Friday a little bit better. Humidity's lower, high temps about 93, 94 degrees. Day planner, 78 in the morning, 90 by noon. High temp, 98. Heat indices still way up there, about 106 to 112 across the region. But check this out on Friday. They back down a little bit. Heat indices into low to mid 90s, which I mean, it's still hot, but we'll definitely take it. 98 tomorrow alert day and then 94 Friday, 93 Saturday, 96 on Sunday. So that's a little bit better for Marion days and Carthage as we get into the weekend. But again, we got to watch some of those stronger storms plowing in a little bit later on tonight. But on the other side, we need the rain. We need the rain. All those people, a lot of people sleeping in tents tonight in Carthage, and they don't want rain tonight. It's very true, very true. Thanks, Doug. The Crawford County Fair kicked off today in Girard, Kansas. It features tons of events, including animal judging, live music, and a barnyard Olympics. We sent photojournalist Ty Parks to take it all in. So it's the judge has a certain thing that they look for, and so we bring in outside judges from outside the county to take a look at the foods that are brought in. They look for things like texture and taste. The judges probably have the best job in the food and food preservation group because they get to taste everything that comes in as far as baked goods. And then they evaluate the canned goods from the preservation side, from the different university guidelines like headspace on a jar and how well it's filled and if there's any bubbles or if the chunks aren't consistent in the vegetables that they're processing. A lot of people um, wonder how do judges tell. You can tell by the type of crust. You can tell by the care that they put into actually making the pie. And definitely you can tell by the taste. So our main mission is to support the angels among us, which is the nonprofit organization that provides funds for local cancer patients fighting cancer. 
um, from we help patients afford wigs, we supply gas cards, um, help with grocery bills. So that's what the Angels Cafe that is during the week of the fair supports. Um, last year we raised a little over, it was a little under 20000 All our money stays local. There's Nobody is paid to do this job. It's all 100% volunteers. Um, so all our profits go to support that. And plus, it's really good fried chicken. I don't doubt that it has some really good fried chicken. The Crawford County Fair runs through Saturday. Still ahead, the Riverton All-Stars head to the Little League Regional Tournament in Indiana. And the Joplin Outlaws begin their final homestand of the regular season. John Dale says those stories and more coming up next. Every Casey specially rest. The Joplin Outlaws return home to Joe Becker Stadium this evening after a road trip where they won three and lost three. Now tonight begins their final homestand of the regular season. It's first responders night at Joe Becker Stadium as the Outlaws take on the Texarkana Rhinos. Joplin firefighter and EMT Colby Tucker fires a strike on tonight's first pitch, as does Joplin Sports Hall of Famer Bob Tucker on his 86th birthday. The Outlaws start Reed Woodland on the mound. Even though he's a position player, he gets a strikeout in the first. Then in the second, Gets another, this time swinging, but Joplin falls behind 3-1. to one. Brett Sarwinski, though, starts a two-out rally in the third with this bloop single as it falls down in center field. Next batter, Cale Good. He gets another base hit right back up the middle in the center field. Bases are loaded for Will Doherty, and he puts a charge into this one in right field, but hit directly to the Rhinos outfielder. That ends the inning. Into the fourth, Texarkana adds two more to its total with this swing of the bat, home run to right field. Gets a lot worse from there, just not the Outlaws' night. They fall to the Rhinos, 17-5. Early this morning, the Riverton 12U All-Stars load up into their cars and begin their trip to Whitestown, Indiana to participate in the Little League Regional Championship. They'll be facing the state champs from Iowa in their first round game on Friday afternoon and are excited at the opportunity to be playing on national television. It's been an honor actually. Uh, they're a good group of kids. Uh, they love baseball and they love to compete. Um, and I would, I would hope to coach them forever, but I can't do that. One nothing, Freddie Fermin adds to that lead. When he goes to deep left for a home run, it's three to nothing Royals at that point. We skip ahead to the fifth inning. Salvador Perez comes up to the plate and he hits one to a pretty similar spot. This one doesn't quite get out, goes up to the wall. That's an RBI double. Kansas City leads five to three. Now to the ninth. Royals up by three. Bobby Witt Jr. gets the inning started with an infield single. It's another multi-hit game for him. He leads the major leagues in that category. Next batter, Vinny Pasquantino. This ball had no chance of staying in the yard. That's gone for a two-run homer. It's eight to three Royals. They would add two more later in that inning. And now the White Sox entered the day with, get this, a 16-game losing streak. The Royals turned it into 17. They dominate on the road. Final score, 10 to three. Meanwhile, in St. Louis, rookie pitcher Michael McGreevy making his MLB debut. Cards trying to get the series win against Texas. In the second, he strikes out Nathaniel Lowe swinging. Then in the third, McGreevy strikes out Travis Jankowski. And in the fourth, Marcus Simeon goes down looking. McGreevy goes seven innings, allowing one run. He finishes with three strikeouts. In the fifth, cards up 3-0. Alec Burleson hits one into center. That dropped for a single. Two runs are going to score. Now 5-0. Three batters later, Tommy Pham, for the Cardinals, just got back at the trade deadline. He hits one to the wall. That's a double. Two more runs score. Next batter, Brendan Donovan. He drives one back up the middle and through for a single as that falls down. Rangers have to go to the bullpen before the fifth inning for the second night in a row. Cardinals win it 10 to one. 
Back to the Joplin Outlaws as they're going down the stretch of their regular season. They're also looking for a few more players. They've had a lot of injuries to their team this year, so they're trying to get the word out that they need some more players to come in. Let's hope they can get that done. We'll be right back. Where there are nasty cracks and dry. Here's something kind of cool and refreshing for you. Some kids in Pittsburgh have a big idea for staying cool and helping others in the process. Nana's house played host to a grandkid operated lemonade stand today and they raked in some pretty serious bucks. What made the event even sweeter was the kids decision to donate the money raised to St. Jude's Children's Hospital and some local fundraisers for kids in need. It sounded fun and I did it at daycare once and I thought it was really fun. I just like helping people and I feel like it makes me a kind person. Bryn Hobbs, you are indeed a kind person. According to Nana, also known as Karen Thomas, the kids raised 156 bucks for St. Jude and they would gladly take more donations. I know a number of you would be glad to help out. Yeah, donating to childhood cancer. Yes, indeed. Worthy cause. Uh, it's going to be hot for a while. It, it is. And we are going to get some scattered thunderstorms in here uh, later on tonight, mainly after midnight, mainly along north of I-44. Alert day again tomorrow due to those heat indices, 105 to about 112. Then the humidity drops a little as we head into the weekend, but still, of course, hot, but at least bearable. Yeah, barely <laughs> bearable. Final sports note. Landon Rowland, who is a standout on the mound for the Parsons High School baseball uh -huh. team last couple of years, he makes his commitment to NEO. We're going to have more oh. on that later tomorrow. So local fans will get to continue to follow him. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget the morning show starts at 5 a.m. And let's make it a great tomorrow.